Hello everyone and welcome back to the Multiverse of 100 plus data science project series. In this video, I am going to discuss about the brain tumor image classification using deep learning. This is an advanced type of deep learning project. So let's see the demo first. Let's have a look the demo application that's called the brain tumor image classifications using deep learning. And this application is built by using Python and Flux framework. Also, this is an advanced type of deep learning project, which one is really far better than the previous one. So let's select here on photo from the directory. So let's select this one and I'm going to click here to open and click here to predict. And you can see how quickly it will give me the response. That's called the ES brain tumor. So let's select another photo. Okay, let's select this one and click here to open and click here to predict. Now you can see ES brain tumor. So let's select some images from the no. So let's say no and let's select this one and click here to open and again click here to predict. Now you can see no brain tumor, which is really very fast and which one is really very accurate. Here is our today's agenda. Let's see what we're going to be covering on this project. First, we're going to discussing about the data preparation. We're going to download the data set from the Kaggle. And after that, we'll do the preparation of our data set. Then you have the EDA, also called the Exploratory Data Analysis. So we're going to do the EDA for the deep learning. Then we have the data argumentation. If our data is imbalanced, then we're going to try to balance it using the data argumentation and try to generate some new picture. Then we have the data pre-processing. We're going to be using here the OpenCV in order to do the processing of our data. Then we have the data spreading. We're going to divide our data set into train, test, and validations. And after that, you're simply going to building our CNN model or the transfer learning model. And after that, you're going to be using here the unfreezing and the fine tuning in order to make our model more better than the previous one. At last, we're going to be building here one Flux web application and try to test it out. So bina kisi darke har har mahadabal ke start karte tutorial. Well. After downloading the dataset from the Kaggle, I get here one zip file that's called archive.zip and the same working directory, I'm simply going to create here one IPNB file and for this project, I'm simply going to using here the Jupyter Notebook. You can also use here the VS Code, PyCharm or Google Colab itself. Well, so first thing first, I'm going to be importing all of the necessary library and try to load the zip file from my working directory and try to unzip it using Python command. So first, I'm going to be importing here the pandas spd. So let's say import pandas spd. Then I'm going to be importing here the numpy as np, numpy as np. Then I'm going to be importing here the matplotlib. So matplotlib dot uh, lib dot pyplot as plt. Then I'm going to be importing here the os and also the shuttle uh, because os is needed in order to load the dataset from my working detail. So that's why I'm going to be using here the operating system. And then I also importing here the shuttle because I need to do some rename for our dataset. So that's why. Then I'm going to be importing here the CB2. Let's say import the CB2 because OpenCV is needed in order to process our data. Then I'm going to be importing here, let's say import, uh, let's say import the matplotlib, matplotlib.image, uh, let's say image as MP image, like that. And simply I'm going to using here my matplotlib inline. So let's say uh, matplotlib inline. And also I'm going to be importing here the Seaborn. So let's try to import it here before that. So let's try to import here the Seaborn as SNS. Simple, simple library, right? Then I'm going to be using here the style of our float. So let's say plt.style.use. Let's try to using here the gz float. Okay, gz float because you want to do the data preparation after that also the doing the EDA that's called the exploded data analysis. So that's why you did this uh, matplotlib and also the Seaborn. Well, so now what I'm going to do, I am simply going to, uh, uh, to load the data set from my directory. So let's try to use the shift enter. Otherwise, you can also using this run button. So this is called our data set. Okay, data set. It's called the shuttle. So shayat you have per L single hoga. Okay, now it's loaded. Hope so. Now we need to load our data set. It's called the data set. So our data set in right now in a zip format. If I see that uh, this is in a zip format, we need to also unzip it. So let's see how we can actually unzip it using the Python command. So first I'm going to be importing here the zip file, zip, uh, then I have the file. Then after that, I'm going to using here the zip file, let's call it zip uh, file dot, uh, let's call zip file. You can also using here the tab uh, from the your keyboard for the O2 suggestions. You can see here zip the ext file or zip file or the zip info. So I can using here the zip file because this is nothing but in a file format. So let me give here my file name. So it's nothing but archive. So C-I-B-E archive.zip. 
and let assign into the variable let's call it jet okay simple now after that i need to extract it so for that i'm simply going to using the method it's called a jet dot extract all you can also using here the tap keyboard of uh, a tap i mean tap key from your keyboard so now it will help you to extract your data set okay now you can see our data set is extracted if i see uh, just to wait you can see in our working directory you can see here it having a folder that's called the brain tumor data set and also no and also yes right that's it you can also check it here in your in your jupyter notebook in the home sections you can see brain tumor data set and also no and the yes okay so if i go inside my data set in my folder uh inside this es you can see here all of the images which having the yes i mean y1 y2 y3 like that if i go inside my node directory and you can see it having one no uh two no three no like that okay so what i can do you can also rename your data set right like that otherwise you can also uh make it like this way that it's already available so what i'm gonna do i'm simply going to go on about jupyter network again and try to rename the all of the file so I'm going to rename the file while all of the file like that. Y means yes, and we have in the count of the data set and I have in the JPZ. There's nothing but my uh, file for the all images. Maybe it, it had been the PNG file also inside our data set. So that's why I'm trying to making all of the file inside the JPZ format in the Y underscore one and also for the no underscore one like this one. So that it's look better than our uh, PBS data set that actually down to the Kaggle. If I see it again, just go on here. See in the no, it having just one no. If I go inside my uh, ES and you can see here Y1, okay? So which one is not convenient? So I'm trying to making all of the things of the data set name in the same way. So for that, what I'm gonna do, I'm simply going here again and try to uh, creating here one folder directory, so folder. And after that, what I'm gonna do, I am simply going to giving here my path. So if I go here folder again, let's see. Inside my brain tumor data set folder, it having the same things. So what I can do is simply going to using this one. We don't need to using this yes and no again. So what I can do is simply going to delete it out. Okay, simple. Now let's go on here again. I'm taking time here because it's really convenient to making your data set uh, quite good looking. So let's try to copy this out and I'm going to go on here and try to making this one. Okay, let's type some shell. And now I need to keep here the path. So let's bring to my data set and let's make it yes. Okay, this is all of the images having the yes. Now let's try to creating here one count variable because we need to also count them and try to making this y underscore one. I mean, one is nothing but my count of my images. So now I'm going to iterate to all the images from my directory. So for that for i in, uh, let's say os dot listed. So os actually help you to create in the list of your uh, images inside your directory. So then I'm going to passing here my folder. And after that, what I'm going to do, I am simply going to uh, creating here one source. So source is nothing but my folder my same folder and after that i'm going to giving here my file name so file name is nothing but coming from my i so let's make it i should be the file name so let's say file name so file name like this way and i'm simply going to join it file name okay then after that i'm going to creating here one destination so which one is nothing but my rename of my file name so for that i'm simply going to using here my folder and inside this folder i am simply going to rename it with y underscore with y underscore Okay, Y, capital Y underscore. Okay, let's make it capital Y underscore. And after that, I'm going to make in it, let's say steer of the count. Okay, count means it's nothing but my uh, count of the images. Then after that, I am simply going to convert them into the JPZ. If there are any PNG format file is available, I am simply going to convert them into JPZ, right? All of those images should be converted in the same uh, types of image format. That's it. Now let's assign it to the variable called the destinations, okay? So destinations now the question is why should I actually using this one because it's needed when you're trying to building one machine learning model when you try to deal it to your deep learning model you know to do this kind of tasks it's called a data preprocessing okay it's called the data preprocessing when you go to the real world company you don't have this kind of uh organized types of data there are so many noisy types of data you know to also organize them so that's why i decided this uh, this thing that i need to do it out that how can i do that now after that i'm simply going to using to rename so let's os dot rename so we already see that <laughs> we also see that how can you also rename the data set and how can you rename the file name also so let i need to give here my source and after that i need to give here my destinations destinations that's it and now i am simply going to increase my count so let's count equal to equal to one okay and then at last i'm simply going to keeping here on print estimate so that you can see that 
our printing, I mean, our all of the images is uh, renamed. Let's say all files uh, are renamed, renamed uh, in the ES directory. Okay, that's it. Okay, so now let's shift enter. Now you can see all files are renamed in the ES directory. If I go inside my directory and inside this ES directory, and you can see here uh, y underscore one dot jpg. Now all the images are converted into the jpg format. Well, so now let's try to do it for also the no one. So for that, I'm going to copy this one and I'm going to pass it here and you have the no. So don't worry about the data set. I also keep this data set inside my GitHub directory. Okay. There is no the password, right? Okay. Because I already make the tutorial, uh, I mean the chap, uh, not chapter actually, but chaka wala, jo project tha na, mene do saal pehle isko upload kiya tha mere channel pe. So bahut support mila apko, to mene sosa kiyo nahi hai. Advanced tarike chi isko saal kare. Then you can add it inside your research paper. So now what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to make it Y to be the no. So let's say N. And after that, uh, I'm going to make it is no. Okay, that's it. Now again, shift enter. Now you can see all files are renamed in the no directory. If I go here again and try to check this out just here, no. And now you can see here now N underscore one, two like that. And all the images are combined into the JPG format. That's really fine. That's really fine. Let's call that data preparation. Okay, that's called the data preparations. So now what we're going to do is we explore here about the data preparation part. Now you're going to do the EDA part. EDA part. Also called the exploratory data analysis. Called exploratory. Explore-A-T-O-R-Y. Data analysis. Okay, like that. Analysis. Okay, that's fine. It's called the EDA part. Now let's try to do the EDA part and try to check as how many value or how many images are available inside my data set. And after that, we can also check that if the data set is imbalanced or not in the deep learning tasks. In the deep learning tasks, we check that if the data set is a balance or imbalance. But we also did it in our machine learning tasks. Okay. But we can also do it inside of our deep learning tasks. So what I can do, we simply going to creating here one of the list of the directory. So for that, I'm going to be using here the os.list deal. And after that, I'm simply going to pass here my uh, folder name. So simply going to copy this out and I'm going to paste it here. And let's try to, okay, is there me nahi? Okay, okay. Okay, now it's fine. Yes, so it's our directory. So let's try to creating here one list of that. Let's keep here one variable name. Okay, let's make it list. Okay, let's make it list, yes. Like this one, you can give here any kind of name, but better you don't give here any keyword. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm simply going to creating the length of the list of yes. So let's say list yes. And now I'm going to assign it to the variable. Let's call the number. Okay, better you can give here one uh, understandable the variable name. It will be good for you when you're trying to use it in any program. So let's say yes. It's a good practice to give you here one convenient name. So yes. Now after that, I'm simply going to printing it out. So let's say number of uh, number file yes. And after that, I need to do the same thing for the no also. Okay, I'm going to copy this out and paste it here. And this is the no. So let's make it yes no. And also I need to give in here inside my list directory. That's called the no. Simple. And then I am simply going to uh, give it list no. And also number of files no. That's it. Simple changes. Simple changes. Now inside this directory, if I shift enter, you can see here inside my yes directory, it having just 155 and just having 98 images inside my no directory. Inside my no directory. Just having 155. Okay. So now let's try to creating here one flood. Okay. Let's try to creating here one flood so that you can add it inside your paper. So what I can do is simply go into using here uh, one dictionary. Let's try creating here a dictionary of the tumors and the non tumors. So for that, let's say this is my tumors. So tumor us, tumor OUS, tumors. And now this is inside my numbers of ES file. Uh, yes, file. I mean it having the tumor. So let's say creating here another uh, diction. Let's call the non tumors. So tumor uh, OUS OUS tumors and try to pass in here my number of uh, no. Okay, that's it. We simply creating here a list of that. And now we need to um, having one X value and also the Y value because we simply go into creating here one bar float. So that's why I need to also having the type of X. I mean, X is nothing but in the X axis. And also in the Y axis, I'm simply going to printing here our value. I mean, how many values are available? 155 and 98. 
So I'm going to using here my data dot keys. So keys, keys is nothing but my tumorous. I mean types of the X. How many types of will be available inside my data set? It has been tumorous and the non tumorous. And then after that, I'm simply going to taking my values. So values equal to data uh, dot values. Simple. Okay. Inside my dictionary. This is how you can extract the data from your dictionary, right? Now I'm simply going to creating here one figure and try to using here one figure size. Let's say plt dot figure. And I'm going to using here the fixed size. And let's give here one fixed size. Uh, okay, let's call 5,7 because it's just like the full size papers. So let's say I'm going to using here the plt dot bar float and try to pass in here my type of x. And after that, I'm going to pass in here my values. Simple. And now let's give here on color. So you can give here any kind of color. So let's give here the red color. Okay. Then I'm going to give in here my x level. So x level, x level. So inside my x level, what I have, I just have in the data, my data. And in the y level, I have the number of uh, brain tumor images. Okay. So for that, I'm going to be using here the plt dot y level. Okay. Y level. And then I'm going to be using here the number number of uh, brain, uh, let's say MRI images, brain MRI images, M, okay, RI images, okay, sorry, images, that's fine, okay, let's try to make it I should be the capital, well, now I'm going to also giving here the title, so let's try to copy this, okay, no, try to copy this out, we have say plt dot title, what is put jata, okay, it's called the count of brain tumor images. Okay. Let's make it MRI to images because uh, it's nothing but the brain tumor data set. Let's say brain tumor images. Okay. That's fine. Now you can also save it inside your directory. Otherwise, you need to use it in the PLD.show. Simple. Okay. Let's shift enter. Now you can see here, this is nothing but my uh, data. You can see here the data. It's nothing but my X level. I mean, we have two data, numer tumorous and the non-tumorous. And this is nothing but my count and how many uh, billows of the tumor uh, are available, images are available. You can see it having the 155 uh, billows are available for the brain tumor and non-tumorous billows, nothing but the 98, you can see here. So you can add it inside your uh, thesis defense uh, presentation, even your research paper, okay, in your data set. Now it looks like our data is so, so, so low. I mean, <laughs> Uh, not so not so much amount of data because you're going to be using the deep learning so in deep learning you have multiple i mean the more number of data if you have the last number of data you can simply using the machine learning but in a deep learning you need more amount of data so in order to increasing the data what you need to do you need to do the data argumentation you need to do the data argumentation argumentation okay you need to using here the data argumentations so see uh, the number of images in our data set, uh, it just having the 105, 105 is nothing but the yes and 98 just following the no. So it seems like data is nothing but 61% uh, is nothing but I just can't believe 61% data set is nothing but my yes and all of them are 39% data set is nothing but uh, the no and no. So it's just like the data set is having some imbalance issue. Okay, imbalance, imbalance issue. 61% for the yes and 39% for the no. But how you divide our data set into 20 test split and it's giving the 80% of the data set. So it looks like data set is quite imbalanced. Data set is quite imbalanced. So what you can do here? We can simply generate some extra images, extra images using image data generator in Keras. From Keras, I can also do the image argumentation it's called arguno it's called the argumentation a u g okay like that the spelling is like that so for that what i need to do i am simply going to import all of the necessary library now so first thing first i need to importing here the tensorflow okay so let's try to import it so let's say i'm going to import here the tensorflow stf so tensorflow stf and after that i need to also importing here let's say from uh, tensorflow uh, dot keras dot pre-processing and i'm going to importing here the image data generator let's call pre-processing dot image i'm going to importing here the image data generator image data generator so let's try to also checking here okay pre-processing pre-processing okay okay that's fine 
so image data generator okay that's it then i'm going to importing here let's say import uh, tensorflow dot keras dot models okay models i'm going to importing here the model because we're also building here one machine learning model that's why i just simply going to import it and also i'm going to import from tensorflow tensorflow uh, tensorflow uh, dot keras dot layers i'm going to importing here flatten layer okay let's call the flatten layer then we having the dance layer then we having the uh, dropout okay dropout uh, drop out okay d should be capital and okay that's fine and also for this project i'm simply going to using the transfer learning i'm simply going to using the transfer learning so in this case yes for the image classification tasks bcc 19 is working fine bcc 19 is working fine so for that what i'm going to do i'm simply going to also import it here so for that i'm going to import it from tensorflow uh, dot keras dot application applications uh, dot bgg19 i'm going to import in here the bgg19 okay that's it that's it okay we can also import in here the also the optimizer let's try to also import it let's say tensorflow dot keras dot optimizers 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 and i'm going to import in here the sgd statistic gradient descent and also using here the rms prop if it's needed so let's say rms prop and try to using here the head on if it's needed okay then we're going to also using here the callback so let's try to also import it let's tensorflow uh, dot keras dot callbacks if it is needed okay i'm going to importing here the model checkpoint okay model checkpoint then we have in the earliest dropping okay earliest dropping so that we don't need to train the model again and again and try to using the reduce uh, the LR on play to you. So let's try to import it here. Shift enter. So till importing all of the library RMS prop. So it's called the RMS prop from the optimizers. Okay, let's try to remove it. I don't, I don't think that is needed. If it's needed, we can actually simply import it. Okay, that's fine. So import here the, all of the necessary library. Now what we're going to do is simply going to uh, fast door to the data, the, uh, data, data argument, argumentations and try to generate some new data from our data set and try to store it inside one uh, variables right so that for that first what i'm going to do i'm simply going to uh, creating here one argument data functions okay so i'm simply going to using a df i mean def argumentations so let argument uh, okay this uh, argument okay, that's like that argumentation argumented data like that and for that inside of a parameter i need to give in here my file path i mean my file directory then i need to give in here the number of generator sample i mean how many samples that you're going to generate so you can give here six sample or nine samples it's up to you so let's call generated generated okay it's to be generated spelling mistake was a generated sample okay sample sample and then i can using here the saved directory in which directory you need to save it out the generated images okay okay so again it's not c plus plus so let's try to go on here shell and try to current output i'm simply going to clear it this is how you can also clear your output now i'm simply using here the image data generator so image data generator and simply giving her some property instead of a data set uh data generator it having some uh actually some property inside your image data generator it's actually pass you need to pass it inside as an argument so there are some argument are actually available let's call the rotation range it actually give you the rotation of your data set so let's give you the rotation as a tan then you can also using the uh, zooming you can also use the sharing you can also do the horizontal flip you can also using the vertical flip so let's try to give in here the white shift range let's give here 0.1 uh, then let's give in here the height shape range. I mean height shape range. Let's give in also 0.1. Then you have the shear range. So it's having a shear range. So let's also give in here 0.1. And you can also give in here the brightness. So let's try to give in here the brightness. Because our data set is just like the darkest. So you can also give in the bark uh, the brightness range. So you know to give in here the brightness range, 
uh, in the form of the x and y. So I need to give you here uh, x value and the y value. So 0 0.3 and 0 0.1. Or oh, let's try to give in here 1.0 so that it's look brighter than uh, the existing images. So also let's give in here the horizontal flip. So horizontal flip, let's give in here true. And you can also give in the vertical flip. So let's give in here the vertical flip. Let's try to make it true. Okay. Now you can also give in here the fill mode. So fill mode, you can also give me here the, let's try to fill it inside my nearest pixel. So let's say nearest pixel. So you need to be using the nearest pixel here, okay? Okay, so now it's it's our uh, image data generator. It's already initialized it. So let's try to inside, uh, put it inside one variable. Let's call it data gen. So let's try to, okay, put a pani pill like that. Okay, that's fine. So now what I can do is simply going to creating here a loop and try to iterate to all the value inside our uh, file directory. So for that, I'm simply going to using here the for file name in OS dot list dir and simply I'm passing here file directory. That's it. So in order to loading our data set, I mean loading our images, we're going to simply using here the IM read, not IM read, open CV. Okay. So cb2.imread, yes, I am read, it's nothing but one method. And I'm passing here my file directory. So my file directory and plus, and it's giving here a backslash. And after that, I am simply going to passing here my file name. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Cafe hota hai? File directory, let's say I have my passing my file directory inside my argument. That's called a brain tumor. Mm, tumor data set like that. So it will giving here one slash. And after that, I have my yes, it will give me here another slash. Okay, now let's pass in here my file name. So let's say file name is nothing but let's say y underscore one dot jp like that. Okay, this is my path. So what I can do is simply going to read the file from our directory and try to save it inside one folder called images. Okay, now what I can do is simply going to reshape it. Let's say image, image dot reshape. Why? We need to also pass it inside my data chart generator. So that's why I have to reshape it. So reshape, we have one images in a one batch. So we can be here one. And after that, I'm going to add it to my uh, shape of my images. So shape of my images. So let's say image dot shape, image dot shape. So how it actually work? So when you try to reshape your data set for the CNN purpose, so you need to using here like this way and comma width, uh, width and height and channel like this way. This is the formula of the reshaping. So n means number of images, how many images you're going to give in here as a batch size. So one means we just simply going to read the one image at a time. Then you have in the width of the images and height of the images and number of channel. Is it the RGB images or the grayscale images? Well, so now simply going to put it inside the BIM variable called images. Image, not images. Now let's try to try to also give in here one save prefix so that we can also mm, actually recognize that this is real argumented images so what i can do let's say I call aug and i'm simply going to pass it my file name let's call file name and trying to uh, take it for the minus four okay minus four mean one two three four that's dot jpg that's mean a r a u g underscore a u g underscore and having that a uh, defined name like this one one dot jpg like this one so that's why I'm simply going to using here the splitting. Okay, this kind of splitting you can do that. So let's try to initialize here one i for zero. Why? Because I am trying to load the images from the passes. I'm trying to using here the image data generator. So it will flow from the gener uh, generator. I mean flow from the images from the directory and try to creating here one uh, generator. So that's why I'm trying to using here the batch size here. So I just simply going to using here i equal to zero. Okay. Now for batch, I mean, how many batch of the images is flowing inside your data set. So your data dan dot flow. Okay. And I'm going to pass in here. My X is nothing but images. And I need to give in here a batch size. So batch size. So batch size kitna hai. You can give here any kind of batch size. I'm going to give here one because in one single time, I'm simply going to load one images. Now inside the save directory, I'm going to pass in here my uh, save to the directory file. So it's called save to directory. And I'm going to make it save to directory. So thoda time let me happen. Okay. Then we have the save prefix. So save prefix. Save prefix. So let's start giving here the save prefix. 
in which prefix file and so I'm going to save it out okay save prefix mine I mean this one and now I need to give in here also save format in which format so save format so you can give in here the png or jpg let's give in here the jpg format so move the jpg format in here so let's give it here jpg okay that's fine now let's try to increment the i okay plus equal to i and then after that if the i is greater or equal to uh, number of generated sample okay that you're passing here number of generated sample and after that i'm simply going to going to bracket out okay if it is the number of sample images are generated so you can simply bracket it out we don't need to break actually uh, we don't need to actually generate it again okay so it's simply going to using the shift enter now it's loaded okay so what i can do we simply going to uh, creating here one start time function so it can actually give you the timing i mean how many time it actually it will take in so we can also creating here one function you can also <laughs> creating that so let's start creating out let's call def timing okay so i'm simply going to using here a second that's the second eclipse okay okay then i'm going to using here h is mean hour so let's say integer and second eclipse uh, divided by let's say 16 into 16 you can get here uh, the how hour then for minute what you need to i need to giving here the again this second eclipse so second eclipse and we can modulize it for the minute so that's a 16 into 16 and after that you can simply divide it then you can get here the minute for the second i send simply going to passing here my second and we can modulize is 60 so that it's not it not go up on the 60 then i'm simply going to return it so let's say return one f string let's say return is an f string so it having the hour and dot you having the minute then you having the second you having the second okay thoda sa second okay that's it okay okay it's ready now so let's try to also run it out okay it's also done so now what you can do is simply going to creating here uh the yes path and also no path so let's take in some shell let's scale yes path so it's called yes path and also having the no path okay so our yes path is nothing but my brain tumor uh brain tumor data set and inside the yes folder and we for the no we having the brain tumor data set and we having the no folder that's it okay and it also giving here one argu argument data okay argumented path okay that's a data path so and it also created out so let's try to create it out uh, here outside our folder so let's try to creating here one folder called the augmented let's argument that okay data like this way okay let's try to also copy this one okay copy this one well so let's give here the path of the argumented data path and now what i can do is simply going to giving here one backslash also and then i'm going to calling here this argumented data function and i'm simply going to copy this out and i'm going to passing here my uh, file directory so file directory is nothing but my yes path okay so it's nothing but a yes path and i'm going to giving here the number of samples generate samples i'm going to copy this out and i'm going to pass it here so i'm going to generate the samples number of samples let's say give here six and for the no i am simply going to giving here my uh, generate number of samples uh, called nine okay because i have already had the 1055 data 61 percent data and also the 98 percent data 98 images sorry 39 percent data so that's why i'm simply going to hit and trial and i got here the six one is the correct one then i'm going to give you here my save directory this is nothing with my uh, save to the directory where you're going to save it out so i'm going to save it out inside my uh, argumented data path this data path and plus i'm going to give in here the yes okay because inside my yes directory i'm simply going to uh, save this out now i need to do the same thing for no also so for that i'm going to copy this out here and after that simply pass it out 
Okay, let's try to make it out now. Okay, it's generated into nine samples. Okay, fine. Now uh, I can also give here use here these timing functions. Uh, you know, checking this how many times is taken. So for that, I need to also initialize here on a start timing and also the end timing. So let's say start time, start time equal to time dot uh, time. Okay, time dot time. So for that, I need to also import here the time. So let's import it out. So import the time. That's it. Okay. Now I need to also calculate the end time and time equal to uh, time dot time simple time dot time function that's it okay we have the start time and the end time now we need to in, use here the uh, use here the function that's called the timing so for that inside this timing i need to give pass here my execution time so execution time is nothing but execution time is nothing but the difference of end time uh, and to the start time so let's end time minus start time start time that's it now i can simply going to print it out so let's try to print and i'm going to calling here my timing function and i'm going to pass in here my execution time okay this execution time so shift enter so it will give me error os has no attribute list did so it should be a list did so it should be the list did okay list did that's it okay now you can see we got here another error uh, no source file or directory got called argumented es Oh, well, 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 and it also creating here and another directory inside the argumented data that's called the ES and the node directory. That's so it's give me the errors. Okay, let's get here in here the ES and also the no. Just keep in mind. Okay, call no. That's it. Okay, now let's go on here again and try to run it out. Okay, here is it. Now you can see here you can just start next mark. That's why it will try to starting and the execution part the method and try to creating some new data if i go inside this folder and try to check here inside the yes and you can see here data creating is started and you can see here a u g and y one zero two five uh just kind this kind of random value and try to uh, generate some images and you can see here it having some zoom range or the shear range or the horizontal flip or the vertical flip and you try to uh, generate the new images from my data set that you can see maybe it will take time let's see how many images is generated and you can see it's quite low and you can also see that it will filling with the data with the uh, the uh, white pixel because we give here inside this uh, image data generator that's called a field mode is nothing but called the nearest so that's why it actually gave me the feel of the nearest uh, values i mean pixels well so it's loaded and our file is generated inside my argumented data folder and you can see here yes and also the no this one okay it's generated so now what i can do we simply go into checking the summary of the data that how many data are available inside my directory and also check this if the data set right now is imbalanced or not so for that i'm going to simply define here one function that's called the data summary and inside that i'm going to pass in here my main path well now after that i'm going to also give in here my yes path so that's my yes path and also my no path so no path so here is it no uh, path okay so in my yes path i need to give in here my path of my images so it's nothing but inside my argumented uh, data set so it's argumented data and inside that i'm going to pass in here my yes so here is it yes and also and it also do the same thing for no so copy this out and i'm going to pass it here and simply yes to no that's it that's it okay so we have the yes path now what i can do we simply going to calculate uh, how many value are available inside my yes path and also the no path i mean the yes and the no inside my argumented data set so for that i'm going to simply taking the length of my data set and trying to creating here on list deal so let's try to make it os dot list did, os dot list did. and inside this list did, I'm going to pass in here by yes path. It will give me the result that how many value are available inside the yes path and also the no path. Simply, I'm going to copy this one uh, length of that, and after that, I'm going to pass it here. Okay. So this is the yes path, and this is for the no path. No path. Simple. Now let's assign it to the variable. So this is nothing but my uh, positive. Let's say m positive and let's call the let's say m negative. 
okay let's call m negative okay okay now what i can do we simply going to uh, add both of them so let's say this is m equal to number of positive and also number of negative so let's say number of positive plus number of negative okay okay that's it so you can also make it m to the n so thoda mistake ho gaya okay let's make it m should be the n so that is look better number of positive and number of negative that's good number of negative that's it okay now we have the total number of values and also the positive and the negative now we can calculate the percentage of the data set so let's say positive percentage so positive percentage so positive percentage is nothing but number of positive into 100 and after that i can simply going to divide with, with the a whole number of values so we have uh, n so let's say divide with n now you need to also copy this out and try to pass it here it's nothing but my negative percent so let's call negative percent and try to make it n post to n negative that's it okay now we are having the samples and also the percentage of our data so let's try to print it out getting here on f string so this is nothing but my uh, number of sample number of sample total sample so let's pass it here n and after that i'm going to simply using here printf <laughs> not a printf not print and the f string so this is the positive percentage and the negative percentage so let's say number of positive okay uh, number of positive or the negative okay let's try to printing here uh, first number of positive okay then we have the percentage let's say percentage of uh positive let's say percentage like this one okay we can also give here one uh let's say percentage of positive rather so this is nothing but the percentage so again here one percentage and let's say number of positive okay positive sample okay in percentage percentage okay okay then we can simply going to copy this out copy this out here and i'm simply going to pass it here and try to make it n o pos to n o negative and after that i'm simply going to make it n e g percentage simple well okay it's not give me the results because i need to also calling this uh, data uh, underscore summary functions so that's what, what i can do is simply going to call it out and i have to passing here my main path so let's copy this data summary and i'm going to give in here a path of that so let's call this is my path so where is it this is the path data path and i'm going to pass it here and shift enter now you can see your number of sample is nothing but 200 uh, 2635 so let's give in here uh, some colon so that it look better and giving here on some space okay now now this look better now you can see here number of samples of 206 uh 2635 our positive sample is nothing but 41 percent and those of the images is nothing but the negative samples 1500 okay i think uh there should be some mistakes well so i delete all of the images from my directory because it will actually creating here the yes images uh, for the multiple time because I actually give keep here one wrong path i just give here the yes path uh this kind of yes path so that's why it actually gave me this kind of error so i just now simply going to make it no path and after that i run it out and i got here i got it one minute 53 seconds and after one minute 53 seconds it will actually generating all the images uh, inside my augmented data directory and you can see here we have the right now uh 2064 images and here 100 i'm sorry 1085 images uh, inside my positive and this is nothing but my negative okay negative thoda mistake ho jata hai negative okay okay here now so we have 979 images uh for the negative samples now it looks like data set is right now balanced data set is looks like the balanced data set okay mistake ho rahe hai kyunki yahan par bahar mein kya bolu mom aur grandpa hai thoda shor ma ja raha hai isliye okay thoda mistake ho jata hai yahan par okay so how need to do the coding part shanti se karna okay so now what i can do is simply going to floating here the same float 
okay so floating the same float uh, for the that you do earlier so what i can do is simply going to paste it here and i'm going to also copy this out uh, the same thing copy this out and i'm going to paste it here uh kidar, 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 kidar. paste it here now i'm simply going to make it let's say a uh, number of files of yes so i need to make it the augmented augmented data okay augmented mujhe spelling nahi ho rahi so main isko augmented bolta hu okay let's try to now print it out now you can see here uh, data set is right now uh, quite balancing it's called count of uh, brain tumor images and now data set is looks like balanced okay this is how you can actually generate the new data and you can see inside this uh, augmented data folders it having the yes and no directory and all the images okay now inside these images you can see here some images you can see it will zoom and try to uh, flip the images okay flip the images and try to fill it with the nearest field because in our code we actually using here the nearest field if i see this out uh, just what you can see field mode is nothing but nearest it will take in the nearest pixel of your data set of the images and try to fill it out okay try to, try to fill it out now what i can do we need to do the data preprocessing now the data preprocessing picture come into the pictures okay let's take some shell well so now we're going to discuss about the data preprocessing that's called data preprocessing uh, processing okay so if i see the data if i go here and you can see this is nothing but my images so if i open one uh, these images now inside these images you can see here there are some extra uh, pixel black pixel faltu ka jo pixel hai na wo hum remove kar sakte hain jo faltu ka pixel hai par black pixel so what i can do we simply need to detect the contours uh, of our images okay so for that we can using here the open sweep in order to load the images and also try to detect the contours and after that we can simply remove this uh, black pixel which is not necessary that's why data preprocessing is come into the pictures right so what i can do is simply going to convert this bgr images because open sweep read the images in the bgr format and after that we simply going to make it blur so that we can apply here the thresholding we can apply here the thresholding because uh, fine contours i mean the contours is actually working uh, in the gaussian blur uh, very well so that's why you know to also using here also gaussian blur and after that you can using the threshold so that's why you need to uh, convert this image in the blur and after that you can using here the threshold then you can use here the erosions and also dilution in order to getting the right pixel right pixel so that it is uh, so that uh, our fine contour function uh, can get this all of the uh, all of the contours of the images and try to remove this black pixels okay so let's go on here and see what i going to discuss here let's go so first what i can do is simply going to convert uh, bgr to gray okay then we're going to apply here the blur okay or you can say gaussian blur so let's say gaussian blur go g a u double s a n gaussian blur then you're going to apply here the threshold because we're going to find the contours of the images so you're going to using the threshold or thresholding in the open sweep basics right then you're going to using here the erot also erosions then you're going to using here dilate also dilations then we're simply going to find the contours 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 okay so for this task we're going to be simply using here the open cb and we already load it out in our uh jupyter notebook you can see here import cb2 so now what i can do is simply going to define here one functions so let's also uh, comment out those lines and now i'm simply going to define here one function let's call daf let's say cross brain tumor okay brain tumor and i'm going to pass in here my images and let's try to making the plot by default let's make it float should be the false and when you actually run uh, call these functions uh, we can simply do the floating part okay so first we can going to convert our images into the uh, bezier to the grayscale because open cv read the images in the bezier format so simply i'm going to using here the cbt color and i'm going to pass in here my images and also i'm going to convert this cb2 dot uh, color bezier to bezier color bezier to gray okay bgr to gray bahut din ke baad main open cv mein code kar raha hu okay let's try to make it gray so i have lots of videos regarding open cv and so many crazy projects i actually do it using open cv like a doctor strange the multiverse of madness projects and so many things like color detection all the things you can do it so let's say gray 
Uh, and now I'm going to apply here the uh, CB2 dot Gaussian blur. CB2 dot Gaussian blur. So Gaussian blur. Now I'm going to give him here my gray scale. And now I need to give him a kernel. So kernel 5 cross 5 this gene. Enough, enough, enough. Let's make it zero now. Now I'm going to apply here the thresholding. Let's say CB2. CB2 dot threshold. Threshold. And I'm going to using here uh, my gray scale images. Let's say gray. And I need to giving here the value of the threshold. Let's giving here the 45. The lower value. Let's giving here the upper value 255. The maximum one. And I'm going to giving here one threshold uh type let's call trash binary uh because we convert in our grayscale images so gray not our okay be there to gray zr okay gray now what i can do is simply going to take in the first one first pixel so this is a thresholding so let's make it trash like this way then we're going to apply here the root also erosions so we can using here cb2 dot erot erot then i'm going to pass in here my thresholding okay so when you actually try to find the contours it's better you can actually thresholding your images and you can also do the erosion and the dilation you have to getting the uh, you need to getting the border uh quite uh, quite uh busy available so that you can find the contour uh better so let's giving you pass here none and let's giving here the iterations so iterations so how many iterations are you going to take so let's say i'm going to make the iteration let's say two times okay so now i need to also do the dilation also so go to copy this out and same thing same thing now i need to using here the dialect uh, dialect dialect and try to uh, store it inside the same variable copy this out and paste it here okay it's dilated now you can find the contours so you can using here cb2 dot find contours okay find contours is really important when you're trying to uh, detect the shape Okay, is, is it a square shape or a circle or the rectangle? You can using these contours. It's quite important. Okay, now I'm going to using here my threshold. So let's say threshold. This threshold. Let's take one copy of that. I'm going to pass in one copy. So this not actually uh, not take much more amount of memory. So I'm just simply going to pass in here a copy of that. So now I'm going to using here CB2 dot. I'm going to giving here one type. So let's using the uh, my favorites, let's call RETR uh, using here the external one. Okay. Then I'm going to be using here the CB2 dot chain approx none. Uh, you can also using here the chain approx none or simplex also. As in, let's try to using here the simple one. And now I need to convert. Uh, we convert, we actually calculate the contours. We actually detect the contours. Now we need to also uh, grab the contours. So you need to grab the contours. I'm going to be using here another. A library calls the mutuals which will actually help us to take in the contours easily so what i can do is simply going to import it here let's try to import the immutils okay immutils okay now i'm simply going to using here this immutils and dot grab contour okay grab contour and i'm simply going to pass in here my contours okay so this is nothing but my contours so c and ts contours now i can taking the maximum uh, value inside my control because there are so many controls are available so many contracts it is drawing so i need to taking the maximum one so that i can remove the draw uh, back pixel from our brain tumor images so let's say c equal to maximum of maximum of contours so contours and i'm going to giving here one key so key we can give here cb2 dot contour area so based on the contour area, i'm simply going to creating here our invisible rectangle so let's say giving here contour area so contour uh contour area this one okay now we can uh we can extract in the left feature and the right features of our images and try to creating one uh, grid types of uh grid types of uh, shape okay grid types of shape so what i can do we can using here on tuple so let's say using here one tuple t u p l -E, tuple and i'm simply going to passing here my contours and inside this contour, I am taking all of the pixels. So all of the pixels, and I am taking the, all of the pixels again zero. This is for the first one, and I am taking I am going to taking the mean of the value. Let's call ARG mean, okay ARG mean. And in the next time, I am taking the maximum one, and I am going to taking the zeroth one. So this is nothing but my uh, left contours. 
so tuple inside this maximum tuples i'm going to taking the uh, first one it's nothing but the left column okay left column okay in the grid so left column c so all of the row things and left column and taking the minimum of that okay taking the minimum of that so here is it taking the minimum of that okay thoda mistake ho gaya now what i can do we simply going to uh taking this thing again and paste it here four time so this time i'm taking the arg mean to arg max and also copy this out and paste it here okay so this is the value for the bottom top and the bottom so top and bottom should be one so i'm going to make it let's say ext it's nothing but my left features so left features and this is nothing but my right features so this is nothing but my right features so this is important how you are trying to take to float it out so right features and this is nothing but top features so ext top and it having the let's say ext it's nothing but a bottom so let's make it ext bot so now our new image is created with having uh, we don't having the external pixels so what i can do is simply going to using here one variable let's call the new image and i am trying to join all of them okay so now to joining all of them so what i can do is simply going to uh, using this images and try to paste it inside the same images and with with some grid okay with some grid i need to try to forward it out then you can actually understand okay it's better i can type it quickly because it's really take time so well so our typing is done now you can see here it having the new images with the images of the external top okay external top and external bottom and external left to external right so this is the code for floating if the floating is true then you can see here in the parameter a uh, default parameter we actually using here the float equal to false so you can see here actually simply going to creating here on figure and just going to show it using a plt dot i am sure and try to creating here on subplot so that it can it can actually uh, save it the actual images with the augmented images with having the uh, processing images right i am simply going to creating here one tick parameters and give him a title just tick okay simple simple things okay so what i can do i am simply going to run it out and now i am simply going to calling this functions called the uh, crop the brain tumor and inside that and it also pass here one images in in the form of the bgr so i need to also read it using the open so that's why i'm going to using here cb2 uh, dot i am read and i'm giving here on path of the images so what i can do i'm simply going to go inside my folder and i'm inside this yes i'm going to copy this path uh, this images and go inside my here and try to make like that augmented mented data inside this es i need to paste here this file name called jpg okay now i'm going to pass this images so this is nothing but my images called image and i'm going to pass the image and also try to making this float should be true okay so now if i shift enter now you can see this my nothing but my original images uh, that you can see in the grid format so that's why i'm actually using here here this external left and external right and top and the bottom so that it can actually creating here one grid of the images now you can see here it remove the pixel the outer pixel of the images and try to creating here one grid so that's why actually using here this uh, contour area of the maximum one so that it can remove in this all of the images and after that it can draw the contours you can also draw the contours using the draw contours function so that it can uh, you can also see this the how the contours is actually working and to draw it inside your opencb it is the basics of the opencb okay i can copy this out you can see here also the array how the array looks like you can also using here the no one so let's using here the no and try to check one images for the no so if i go inside here and try to copy this no okay and go here just to white and i'm going to passing here this one okay now you can see here also the images this is the original images and you can see it's copying uh, quite good quite good you can see here quite good now our data is pre processed okay now if i trying to building this model using this data set it's, it's the more convenient and it will give me the best accuracy it will give me the best accuracy so this is the example of how can you crop the images uh, using the opencb so now let's try to creating here one uh, image loading function so that we can load the function Load the images directly and try to float all some samples of the images. So I'm going to simply going to using here in image loading functions. So, thoda me deep jar ho. 
okay so now what i can do i am simply going to creating here one function let's call load data so load data and i need to passing here my directory let's say directory let's say directory list and i have to giving here my email size so email size then after that i need to creating here one x so that we can divide our data set in the train test and split train test and the validations so that's why i divide our data set in the x and the y so inside this x it having the, all of the features of the backdoor then inside this y i have the list of the uh, classes that no tumor or the yes tumor so i need to initialize here the height and the uh, weight of the images so for that i'm going to taking it from my image size so image size so what i can do it having the uh, two two things it's nothing but my image width and the image height so let's make it image width and also the image height now what i can do we're going to taking all of the images from our directory list so for that i'm going to using here the for loop let's call directory and in directory list okay now inside this directory list i having all of the file names so for that i'm using here the for loop let's call file name in os dot list in. and inside this directory i'm going to pass in here my directory uh, directory because i need to also convert them into the train test and validation because we're just getting the data we don't actually using uh, here the train uh, data folder or the testing data folder or the validation data folder because we're going to be using here the bzz 19 so for that and it also creating here one uh, train and the, also the testing and also the validations jan so that's why i just getting here this function which will help me to load the data from my uh, east directory now what i can do is simply going to using here cb2 dot i am read uh, i am read and i'm going to passing here my a uh, directory so called directory and then i'm going to using here the one backslash n because it will go inside this directory and backslash n and with having the file name with having the file name that's it now what i can do is simply going to call in this function call the uh, crop the brain tumor okay crop the brain tumor because we're just simply creating here a function but we don't uh, call it in our entire data set okay that's why it's using this one now inside this crop brain tumor i'm going to pass in here my images so this images is nothing but this one uh, let's call image and now inside that i'm also giving here the float so let's try to make it now for plot equal to false so that it don't float it here okay otherwise it take more time okay now let's uh make it inside the images again so images now we're going to resize it because we need to also pass it inside my model so you need to give in here one fixed size if i go here now you can see here the size of these images and the size of the images is not uh it's not the similar so what i can do is simply going to uh, make all of the images in the same size so that you can pass it inside my cnn network so that's why i'm going to using here cb2 dot resize uh, this size and inside that I'm going to pass in here my image and I'm also giving here my size so it's called the D size and inside that I'm going to pass in here my image height and the image width and uh, with the channels I don't think I don't need to pass in here the channels because it's just having the one channels now inside this I'm also giving here my interpolations so inter interpolations so interpolation I can give let's say interpolations let's give in here the interpolation because let's say cb2 dot uh inter inter inner or inter let's inter cubic okay cubic that's one okay the resizing one now we simply going to uh, normalize our data set so let's image equal to so we can simply going to normalize our data set so what i can do we can simply going to divide it with a 255 so let's say divide by 255 because 255 is nothing but the maximum of the uh, images of the each rgb images so we simply going to normalize our data set with having the 255 because we just having the one channel so that's why I divide the data set now we're going to simply pass in here my append uh, with append to the images inside our x and inside the y we need to give in here my class i mean the features class that how many features are available so i having the no and the yes so what i can do if the directory okay if the directory let's say if the directory so directory uh, of the last one uh, last one so that's mean minus three uh minus three to two because it having the directory and the slash and the file name so if it is nothing but the yes if it is nothing but the yes so then i am simply going to pass it uh simply going to pass it inside my y dot append yes means in the passing here one because i need to passing here the numerical value 
otherwise i can simply go into a passing here uh, y dot append let's be zero that's it now we have our x and the y so we, we need to also simply going to convert them into the uh, convert them into the numpy array so that we can actually uh, using here the deep learning or the machine learning algorithms okay don't need to use the machine learning deep learning algorithms so that's why i'm using here this np dot array so that it is converted into the one array format now in the passing here my x and we need to do the same thing for the y let's call np dot array this is a basic thing that how can you creating one uh, things from the scars okay this that's why it's advanced now we can simply go into shuffle it so let's call x comma y okay x comma y i can using here the shuffle let's keep using here the shuffle okay shuffle and after that i'm going to passing here my x comma y that's it okay now let's try to printing it out let's try to print uh the number of examples that's going to be using here the one f string so number a number of example is that's example is okay let's try to printing here the length of that so we can pass it inside my curly backers and try to passing here max now let's you can also printing here the shape of the data set uh let's try to return here now x and the y x comma y and you can also printing in the shape of the x and the print of x of the y so what i can do let's say this is nothing but the shape uh x shape shape is and this is nothing but the x dot uh, x x capital x dot shape so you can simply copy this out from here okay this is nothing but the y shape so y shape so let's make it y shape okay our function is ready right now the loot images so now what i can do uh we can simply go into uh using our argumented data and try to calling this one okay so for that i'm also giving here my path so let's say argumented uh mandate path okay so let's giving here path so argumented mandate okay okay e nahi hoga yaha par let's argumented data and this one slash okay now what i can do we have in the yes path and also no path so let's call argumented let's call the yes path and we having the no path so i'm going to copy this out and i'm going to using this one copy paste and try to make it yes and try to make it yes okay it's no okay fine now what i can do we need to initialize here the image with an image height so let's the image width and also the image height so let's try to using here 240 comma 240 okay you can pass it inside one tuple inside one tuple that's it now we simply going to calling this one the load data so let's say load data and inside this i'm going to passing here my data as a list so let's call argumented data <coughs> this is not the yes also it should be the no argumented yes so i'm going to passing here my argumented yes and also the argumented no this one and also passing here my image height and the image width so what i can do is simply going to copy this out copy this out in a tuple format okay now it will give me here the x and the y so if i using here the x comma y so that's it well so now inside this directory it will go uh, that okay i think i got on mistake i need to using here the argumented data okay you simply can use this one argument data dot yes you can also using his argumented path also okay let's see our data is converted or not then after that we can get here the shape of the images uh, how it is done then you can simply going to float our images uh that we actually save it inside our data set then after that we simply going to split our data set for the training uh the testing and for the validation that's it that's it the data processing part then we can jump on the model building which one is really important one right well it's a name shuffle is an okay we don't define it here we need to also define it here so what i can do we can using it from sklearn from sklearn uh sklearn dot utils so utils we can simply going to import in the shuttles shuffle okay shuffle now using the shift enter and try to okay better you can using here this argumented path uh, like this way so that we actually using it here so let's try to make it yes because we initialize it so why we don't use it here let's copy this out now let's try to make it no okay now shift enter okay it will try to 
uh, generate the images and try to save it inside my same directory argumented yes and argumented name folder right so i'll back after uh, when the processing is done well it's loaded and now you can see your number of sample is nothing but uh, 2064 and you can see shape of the x and shape of the y now what i can do uh, i can simply going to do one floating so i'm going to do the first coding well we create here one float sample images and which one taking the number of sample is nothing but by default 15 so i'm simply going to run it out okay and i'm going to cl uh, calling this one uh, float sample images so i'm not going to do the coding for the floating types of things uh, in the next because it is will really take time and which is not really necessary okay because the necessary things is nothing but divide your data set and try to do the pre-processing which are necessary but floating is not necessary i think okay so we can pass in here my x and the y so let's call x comma y okay that's shift enter now it will floating the images and uh, try to taking the images from a directory and try to float it uh, with having the number of sample is nothing but the 50 okay now you can see now nothing but the sample of the images it having some extra one i think it's not uh, uh correctly preprocessed okay now you can see here this is nothing but the images uh you can see here some images from our directory okay that's really cool that's really cool okay so you can see the images of the yes also printed okay you can see right now uh, it's uh, remove the black pixel from your data set and our data set is look now now clean okay you can add it inside your paper or uh, different presentations now the part is nothing but call the data splitting okay call the data splitting data splitting splitting okay that's it so now we need to divide our data set into the uh, train test and also the validation let's call train then we have in the test uh, then we have the validations okay <clears throat> in kaggle it may be in some kind of data set you had just having the train test and validation folder but in this case yes you don't have any train test and validation folder you need to create it manually you have to create it manually now the question is how can i create it out how can you create it out so let's try to create it out so what i can do is simply go into creating here one base directory uh, let's call that humorous and non-tumorous this kind of thing i'm going to creating here one folder because you're already creating here argumented data inside this folder it's having the yes and the no and you can see here and inside the brain tumor data set is having the image of the tray uh, yes and the no images so what i can do is simply go into creating here one base directory and try to using these functions that's called the uh, uh, load data and try to save it inside this folder so what i can do i am simply going to creating here one base directory so let's call base uh, directory so let's say tumorous okay let's call tumorous uh, and non-tumorous okay let's like that non-tumorous okay this kind of directory i'm trying to creating here inside my folder you can also do it manually let's see uh, how can you also do it using the coding so let's only also check it out if uh, it's not in os dot uh, path dot listed in the working directory this kind of directory i'm simply going to copy this one uh, it is if it is not available inside my directory it's simply going to create it out okay so let's say os dot make uh, make did so mkdir mkdir and you're passing here my base directory okay and it also passed it and to follow the indentation so arrow to aagaya yahan par thoda stop dena padega now module and path has no attribute list dir so is nothing but list dir or is dir oh bhai is dir now it's checking and try to creating here on folder let's see go on here now you can see it creating here on folder it's called the tumorous and the no tumorous i mean non tumorous so now what i can do uh, we simply going to creating here three or folder called train test and validation in the same way so we can copy this out and i'm going to pass it here uh, the pass it here and pass it here and what i can do is simply going to make in this let's call train directory let's call that's a train here and this is nothing but call os.path directory this is nothing but call a train i'm just going to change it out and it's called the test it's called the validation so i'm simply going to creating here the folder so what i can do is simply going to using here the os.path.join so let's os.path.join 
then I can pass here my base directory and after that I'm simply going to passing here my train one okay this is my, my my train directory and this is my task directory and this is my my validation directory okay let's call it you can find also bell directory so valid directory so I'm simply going to pass it here train directory task directory so this is how you can actually do it using the coding right okay so I'm simply going to copy this one and I'm going to pass it here I'm going to pass it here okay let's try to make it test and let's try to make it test okay sorry valid okay fine okay shift enter now let's go on here again and if I go inside that okay thoda mistake ho gaya par aha yaha par plus nahi yaha par comma dena padega comma and comma the problem ho chuka hai yaha par so what I can do is simply going to select all of them and try to delete all of them okay okay delete ho chuka hai so let's go on here again and try to run it from here again okay now it's created if I go on here and you can see a tumorous and the non tumorous and inside it have a train and also the testing and also billet functions okay fine now we creating here the train ballot and the task directly using the Python command okay now what I can do is simply going to uh, make the directory for the healthy and also the infected images so that it can it can pass it inside this directory so in the each images we can creating here one for the tumorous and another one for the non tumorous okay I just simply going to creating here because the folder structure is like that uh, inside this uh, tumorous and non tumorous folder it having the train test and delete and each folder it having the two two folder it can be the yes or it can be the no so what I can do is simply going to creating here the tumors and the non tumors so that is the name should be convenient okay name should be convenient so what I can do is simply going to using here let's say if not os dot path dot uh, let's say is deal so what I can do you can simply going to copy this one copy this one let's say tumors okay tumors okay here is it either name hoga tumors okay tumor o u s okay that's mean we're simply going to if i see here in my directory it having just yes and no for the yes and no i'm just going to make it tumors and the non tumors like this way so i am simply going to creating here one directory so let's say os dot i can also do it manually i can also do it manually so why i actually do it it's just for nothing but uh aapka jo base hai na wo strong correct is clear right so let's stay, try to making it join and i'm going to passing here my train directory so let's not my train directory this train directory and inside this train directory what i can do i am simply going to creating here another folder called tumorous tumorous okay oh us let's now let's try to make it let's say this nothing but the infected that's my infected uh, train directory called train directory and i'm simply going to uh, creating here os dot mk deal and i'm simply going to pass in here infected infected train deal okay a compound they hold strong will correct actually so i can copy this out and i can simply pass it here okay that's it now it should be the test and it should be the valid okay and i'm going to making it train should be the test and this should be the test and also try to make it should be the ballot so that make it valid and also try to make it is ballot okay so ballot 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 and this is the also the train directory is nothing but my task directory and this is nothing but a ballot directory so this is the ballot directory okay okay let's go on here again and see that tumorous and inside that it also creating here for the all of the things ballot and also testing it is creating this like now it is also creating here another folder it's called the non tumorous let's go in here again and i'm going to copy this one and i'm going to pass it here and let's make it non tumorous okay i'm going to simply copy this out non tumorous non tumorous non tumorous non tumorous okay non tumorous non tumorous okay now we're also making this infected to the healthy because it's healthy okay i'm going to copy this one healthy and i'm going to make it healthy and also this one i'm going to copy this one and pass it here 
copy this one paste it here copy this one paste it here okay this is my trend deck and task deal and also uh, the non tumorous so now if i trying to using this one so let's check it again okay it's the healthy trend deal so let's make it test deal let's check ho jata hai par valid deal valid deal oh, let's make it test nahi to problem ho jayega yahan par okay train healthy test deal now valid deal okay tumorous non tumorous valid okay fine now if i go on checking here you can see a non tumorous and also it having the trend non tumorous and if i go on the valid you can see here the non tumorous well and fine now what i can do we simply going to uh, pass here all the data uh, inside my directory because i also have the data and also the preprocess functions so you can simply going to uh, pass the data inside my tumorous folder and also the non tumorous folder so what i can do we simply going to uh, uh, using our augmented data i mean if i go inside here augmented data uh, this one because from this uh, directory i am simply going to load all of the images so that's why i am simply going to uh, creating here two variable uh, that's called that's called the original uh, data set for the tumors and the original data set for the non tumors okay because i need to i need to creating here the train test and validation and also try to do the pre processing and paste it inside the directory okay so you have the functions for the crop brain tumors so what i can do we simply going to creating here one they are called the original data set uh, for tumor tumorous and this is nothing but my os dot path okay path dot join so what i can do i simply going to passing here my augmented augmented data and i am simply going to using here my es uh the es okay that's one es okay and this is nothing but the original data set for the tumors and i have in the original data set for the non tumors this is nothing but the uh, this is nothing but the argumented data this is nothing but the original one so let's say non so i am using here argumented data this is nothing but the no simple this is my original data set tumors and original data, data set for the non tumors now we have the data now what i can do is simply going to pass it uh inside this crop uh this load data and also the uh this one let's call the crop brain tumor because i need to also save it inside my directory we, we actually using apply it here but we don't save the images we don't save the images so for that what i can do uh, i am simply going to uh using here let's say call files equal to os dot list uh list and inside that i'm going to passing here my uh, folder path i'm going to copy this one augmented data then i'm going to using here the yes for the yes now i'm going to taking all of the file names inside on list so for that i'm simply going to creating here one empty list and now i'm going to taking uh, some images for the training and some images for the testing one okay now the question is how many images i'm going to taking for the training and how many i am images i'm going to taking for the testing one okay so i having i have the 100 if i see here uh, we have 2064 images total images and we have just to white just to white just to white you can see we have the 1085 images uh, for the yes and 900 okay 1085 images for the yes and 979 images for the uh, no well so now what i can do we can simply going to shuffle it out so i'm simply going to taking all the images let's i in range now first 759 i just hit and trial and try to get this value 759 uh below i'm taking for the uh taking for the training so i'm simply going to save it inside my files this is not my files send me same files from the files i'm taking all of the images and try to save it here okay first 0 to 759 images i'm going to take it for the training and 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 uh 759 to 922 for the testing and rest of them i'm going to take it for the uh, validation this is not for the infected one infected yep infected one for the infected one now what i can do i'm simply going to taking all the images from the f name okay in from the f names so this is not even the f names okay f names names 
So let's try to make it F names. Now I'm going to taking all of the images from the F names and try to save it inside my uh, original data set tumorous directory. Original data, data set tumor directory to the to the uh, this training folder. Okay. Now let's try to use in src equal to os dot path dot join and I'm going to passing here my original data set tumorous and after that I'm going to passing here my f name then this is my source and now my destination is a destination is nothing but my inside my training folder if I go in here inside my training folder here it is inside my training folder okay let's go on here now my destination folder is nothing but os dot path dot join and my destination folder is nothing but called infected training data. Infected training data, this training directory. That's why I'm creating this training directory variable. Now I have to pass in here my f name. Well, now what I can do is simply going to copy it. So for that, I'm going to using here the shuttle. So that's why I'm sim actually imported the shuttle before. Shuttle dot copy file. Okay, copy files. So file, yeah, file. Now I have to give it the source and also the destinations. DST. Okay, now shift enter. Okay, f name is not defined. Okay, f name or f name. Okay, f name, f name, f name, f name. Okay, it's f names. Okay. Now you can see here it will try to taking all the images from the yes directory and try to save it inside my friend directory. If I go inside my tumorous, you can see here all of the images is right now uh, added inside my tumorous folder. You can also do it manually, but the problem is, uh, problem is you know to count them you know to count them all the pictures images you can see here 759 uh, 0 to 759 images is go inside my infected trend directory infected trend directory now what i can do i'm simply going to copy this out and rest of the images uh, 759 759 to 922 uh, 922 images is going to inside my uh, testing directory inside my testing directory so for that i'm going to be using here the testing directory simple test directory now rest of the images it having from the uh, 902 to 902 uh, to the 1085 1085 images inside the validation folder so it is not the validation folder compare it simple simple now that's shift enter shift enter okay was okay they go up here but yeah hey validation trained by the check here test two minutes again now let's check for the validations two minutes it's coming it's coming now let's try to do it for the same thing uh, for the no also so what i can do i'm simply going to copy this out okay let's take in some shell so right so let's try to make it no now what i can do i'm simply going to make it healthy okay this healthy trend here okay i am simply going to pass it here okay healthy trend here. copy this one okay pass it three times here is it and also here is it now I have to also change it here. Uh, this healthy trend to the test did called test did and also the valid did. So let's try to make it valid did. Okay, fine. So shift enter, shift enter. Okay, index out of range. Okay, I think I need to make it one zero four. Okay, thoda mistake ho gaya hapar. Okay, 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 okay. Fine, fine, fine. Is for our no data. Okay, no data. Okay. No data, let also change it out. Okay. Zero to let's taking for uh, how many images we can take in the 683. Okay. So one more also remember that just 80% data for the training and 10% for the testing and also 10% for the validations. This is how I divide this data set. I just taking this number. I just uh, hit and trial and getting this number. Right. Remember this one. Comment out this line also. Now let's also change this one. Let's call 683 to uh, 83 or 86. 86. 86. So 86 to 833. 86 to 833. And I'm also taking it from the 833. 833 to the uh, last one is nothing but 979. 979. Okay, now I can run this one. No, no, no. Okay, no in the directory. Uh, argumented yes argumented okay let's try to argumented data okay say no sas file in the directory call argumented yes okay why should this give me the yes okay original data the tumorous so that's why give me the error 
थोड़ा मिस्टेक हो जाते हैं नॉन ट्यूमरस कॉपी दिस आउट देखो कितना एरर आता है यहाँ पर नो लेट्स रन इट आउट हो गया बस हो गया ओ भी हो जाएगा हो गया ओके नाउ लेट्स गोन हियर थोड़ा थोड़ी मिस्टेक होते मैं भी तो ही मैंने होना अब ये कैसे इन साइड दिस नॉन ट्यूमरस इट हैविंग ऑल ऑफ द इमेजेस इट हैविंग ऑल ऑफ द इमेजेस सी हाउ इट्स लुक लाइक ओके हाउ इट्स लुक लाइक इन साइड दिस ट्रेन नॉन ट्यूमरस इट हैविंग ऑल ऑफ द इमेजेस इट्स हैविंग ऑल ऑफ द इमेजेस ओके नाउ वी हैविंग द इमेजेस इज नॉट नाउ इनसाइड माय ट्रेनिंग टेस्टिंग एंड वैलिडेशन सो नाउ व्हाट आई कैन डू uh we can simply going to going to run it out and try to we can also check this out otherwise we can also start the uh coding part for the model building okay let us start the model building part because video kafi lamba ho chuka hai b u l building okay oh fine so now what i can do we can simply going to uh load the data set from a directory from the train test and the validation folder so for that i am simply going to using here the image data generator so let's try to using here image data generator is not just not only for the data augmentation is also help you to load the data from your directory so let's say using here the image data generator and i'm going to passing here my rescale okay rescale let's giving here 1. By two five five, so that our data should be normalized. Now also giving here the horizontal flip that we also do earlier. Horizontal flip, let's giving here zero point four, and also let's giving here the vertical flip, let's giving here zero point four, and now let's use here the rotations, rotations range, let's giving here the forty, and also let's try to using here uh, the shear range. Okay, shear range. uh let's say 0.2 let's giving here the width shift range so let's giving here 0.4 we give it 0.1 but this time i'm simply going to change it out okay so let's say height shift range let's giving here the 0.4 and also try to giving here the fill mode let's call the fill mode uh equal to nearest okay nearest okay that's it okay now i can pass it inside my train data then data then and i'm simply going to creating here the same thing for the testing let's call test data gen and i am simply going to using here the image data generator and i'm going to passing here just rescale okay and i'm going to using here 1.0 but 255 and it also do the same thing for the validations also let's copy this out and make it valid data then So let's make it valid data set, and we have in the image data generator all the things. Okay, fine. Okay, so we have in the valid data generator and also the uh, test data generator. So what I can do, we can simply uh, flow it from the directory. So I'm going to using his train data set dot flow from the directory because it will try to flow in from the directory. So what I can do is simply going to giving here my directory path. so directory path is nothing but my training directory so training directory kidhar hai so we have in the training directory so what i can do we can simply going to passing here my training directory so training directory is inside my tumorous and the non tumorous so here is it tumorous and the non tumorous training this one uh i'm going to copy this out and paste it here training directory that's fine now i'm going to giving here a batch size so batch size let's giving here the 32 that i'm going to giving him a target size so target size target size so target size so target underscore size size so you already giving the target size is called 240 comma 240 and then we have our class mode so class mode is nothing but our categorical class okay categorical then we have our shuffle so we can also do the shuffling so let's making the shuffle should be true so that it can taking the random number of images and after that we can using the sheet so that after when it run it again it not changing the shuffles i mean changing the sheet let's giving the color mode so color mode so let's giving the color mode is nothing but rgb okay rgb fine 
okay now let's also do the same thing for the uh, test also let's try to make it train data gen okay let's make it train generator okay like this way i'm going to copy this out and i'm going to run it here okay it's it's say it's, 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 it had it founding 100 uh, 1445 images belonging in two classes so i need to do the same thing for the test one so let's make it test and also try to make it test okay it having the 310 uh, images for uh the testing now you need to also do the same thing for the validations also just copy this out and try to pass it here it's called the validation generator it's called a valid generator let's make it valid okay now it have been 309 images belonging to the two classes i mean 80 percent data for the training 10 percent for the testing and 10 percent for the validations now what i can do is simply go into checking the class levels i mean on the train generator so we can using the train generator uh, train generator dot uh, class indices so i can use his class indices so it will give me the class level so let's give him here class label okay labels plural number here now we can using here on dictionary and inside this dictionary i'm going to passing here my value that's a key for key and value in class name because this is on dictionary also that's a class labels dot item okay okay items now it having the two things okay one thing it's nothing the class name okay now if i try to print it out class name and we having the non tumorous and the tumorous because you need to convert them into view and one so that's why i'm going to be using here the same thing so that it can give me the key and the value okay just like the dictionary now it's time to building the model so for that you're actually using here the bz19 so what i can do i am simply going to taking more shell and try to creating here the base model so let's call base model so base model is nothing but my bz16 bz19 not 16 and i'm going to give in here my input shape so input shape input shape by default actually bz16 bz19 taking the input shape is nothing but called the two to four cost two to four cost three but in this case i'm going to give in here 240 because I'm trying to make it custom and quite different from the others. Uh, then I'm going to pass in here my include top. So include top nehichaye because it's already uh, it's already uh, classify this model with the one thousand class. So that's why I'm simply going to making this include top to the false. And I'm going to using here this weights. It's nothing but one competition that's called the image net. So image net image net. Okay. Now I'm simply going to making this first layer should be false. I mean, I'm going to making this uh, model. It's because it's already trained. So I'm simply going to making this training level model should be false. So for that, I'm taking for the layers. So layers in base model uh, dot layers. And from the layers, I'm simply going to making this layers dot trainable, uh, trainable equal to false. Okay. Now this is my base model. So let's make it X equal to base model dot output because base model give me also the output now i'm simply going to using the flatten so let's say flat equal to flatten and i'm going to pass in as a as a functional api now what i can do i am simply going to uh, change it i mean change it this bz19 and try to creating here one uh, classific classification layer as like the fully connected layer let's say classification uh uh classification layer you can see just a classifier for the classification because this is the classification tags let's say call classifier and we can add here one fully connected layer so you can add here also dance layer so what i can do is simply going to creating here one dance layer with having the 4608 okay and also activation function is nothing but always the relu so activation i'm going to be using here the relu okay then i'm going to passing here my flat because this is one sequential api so flat and i'm going to making this one let's say this is nothing but a class one okay i think that's going to adding here uh two classification layer okay i'm simply going to pass it inside my model so what i can do i'm simply going to add here one dropout so let's call dropout 
and I'm going to call in here the dropout so drop out and I'm going to deactivate let's say 20% of the neuron should be deactivated and I'm going to simply pass in here my class one it's called class one class underscore one well now I'm going to add here to class number two so class two layer let's keep here advanced layer with having the 1152 neurons and activations is nothing but the relo relo and I'm going to pass in here my dropout also dropout okay then we having the also the output this is my thing my output one so output actually giving here my uh, dance layer and it give me the two because we have in the two uh, features column I mean two class nothing but the tumor and the non-tumors so i'm going to be giving him activations so because this is one binary classification so i need to using here the activate function as a softmax okay if we have the multiple of classes you can using here the sigmoid also now i'm going to pass in here my class number two okay now what i can do is simply going to pass it inside my model so we have the model and inside this model i'm going to pass in here my base model okay base model uh, dot input and also my output output is this is nothing but this one okay now this is nothing but a model one so this is how we can actually building here three models and try to do the free unfreezing and also the fine tuning so that we can get here the best accuracy now if you're checking this model dot summary so model underscore zero one dot summary it will be in the summary of the model okay it will take time layers is not defined so this layer ka baat kare ho. okay layer is not defined uh, which layers base model layers okay uh, let's see this one base model dot layers council layer ke baat kare bhai tu is layer mein okay now it's loaded and now you can see here this is my models bz90 model in the last one you can see here that two and two means we have in the two classes tumor and the non-tumor and total parameter bahut parameter hai par non trainable parameter and the non trainable parameters this is not my model now using this one model what i can do i am simply going to uh, train it out and try to save it inside my directory so for that i am also using the callback so callback we already import it here so i think we should import it here okay we import it in the earlier stripping and also the model checkpoint so what i can do we can also give you the uh, callback functions so we can we can what i can do we can simply go into creating here the callbacks so let's call callback okay and i need to give you a file path for the callback so that it can save it so let's give it uh let's say model dot sy like that okay it's nothing but the callback functions so and it also using the early stopping callback means early stopping thoda if it is the accuracy is not increases we can simply go into stopping the training part now we're to using here the monitor so which one i'm going to monitor so i'm simply going to monitoring the validation loss because based on the validation loss, I can check that our model accuracy is increased or not. Then I can also give him the verbose. Let's give him the verbose equal to one. And let's give him the mode. So let's make it mode should be min. And after that, I'm going to be using the patience. Patience chahiye, kitna patience. Kitna patience chahiye tumko. Or let's say giving him the patience equal to force. After fourth one, it will try to stop in this program. Okay. Just you're checking for the fourth, fourth time. Fourth time, the validation loss. And after that, it will try to stop this one okay now what you can do let's say assign it the variable called es put on a speed jar now now you can using the model checkpoint so model checkpoint and inside the checkpoint i'm going to give in here my file path because inside this file file it is storing all of the checkpoint and try to monitor the validation loss and also oh, the passions so what i can do i'm simply going to copy this one and i'm going to copy this one and paste it out okay bookmark again okay control b okay now i'm going to giving him the safe best only because i don't need the worst one so it's the mass safe karaho best one so best only equal to true now i can giving here the safe weight only because we need to wait because we need also using here the unfreezing and the fine tunings so that's why weight is needed so let's get safe weight is nothing but false right now i'm going to make it false but when i try to save it manually we can we can actually using here the model dot save with so let's try to giving here the mode 
so I'm going to giving him the auto mode and then I'm going to using him the safe frequency safe frequency F R E Q okay safe frequency uh, the frequency is not going to epox based on the epox epox that's it okay this is not my model checkpoints so now we have the reduce uh, LR, LR, O and pellet tube. So we can also using the monitoring. So bahut, yeah, put checkpoint use kare na, callbacks wala. So it will checking for the validation accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. Then what I can do, you can also give me the patience, 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 this one. Patience, kitna patience chahiye mujhe? Let us give it here three patience and also give me the barbose. And let's try to make it barbose equal to one. And after that, I'm simply going to give him the factor. So factor mujhe nahi chahiye. Let's give it zero. And okay, let's give it 0 0.5. That's a minimum learning rate. Kitna chahiye? Let's say 0 0.001. Uh, 0 0.01. This is, the, this is the convenient one. Okay. So what you can do, you can store it inside the CP. And try to also store it. Let's call the LRR. That's it. Now let's define the optimizers. So if I'm trying to run this one, okay, run this one. Okay, not run this one. Okay, run this one. Callbacks. If we're trying to define the optimizer, so we have in the SGD our optimizer. So inside this optimizer, I need to give him the learning rate. So learning rate, let's give it here same thing 0 0.001. Then I need to also give here the decay. So decay, let's give it here decay uh, one e uh, minus six. We can give it here. Now I'm going to also give him the momentum. So let's say moment, uh, momentum. Let us give it the momentum should be the 0 0.9. And after that, I'm going to give him the nastrop. Okay, nastrop. Let's say T R O B. So you can make it true. Okay, true. So this is nothing but S G D. So let's define into the variable called the S G D method of speed jar Now we need to also compile it before fitting with the fitting with our data. So model dot compile. Okay, so inside that I'm going to simply going to pass in here my loss. So loss is nothing but my categorical cross entropy. So categorical, okay, cross entropy. Okay, and optimizer, optimizer. I'm going to pass in here my SZD and the matrix, matrix. It's nothing but accuracy matrix, accuracy. Okay, echo. Okay, accuracy. Shift enter. Okay, model is not defined. So I'm not creating it here. Let's say model underscore zero one. Now it is compiling the model. Okay. Now it's time to fit our model using our data set. Okay. Well, so our model is compiled, but here is a problem. I think you see this earlier. So if I go inside my uh, directory and you can see here the image inside the tumors and the non tumors is not cropping. It's not cropping the images and also don't pre pass the data. If I go inside this uh, tumors again and try to check in this one, it's not cutting this black sheet. You can see the black one, the black pixels, it's not cut down. I mean, the pre passing is not happening here. The pre passing is not happening here. So, why this problem? If I go here the code again, and check this one see one thing uh, we actually do here the uh, we just simply plot it out we simply plot it out but we don't apply these functions we don't apply these functions uh, in our argumented data set folder if you see here we simply going to plot it but we don't apply it in our entire data set so that's why the problem is happening that's why the problem is happening so now what I can do, we simply going to uh, taking some shell, so shell here. And now I'm going to add here, let's call folder one, call folder uh, one, it's called my argumented data, augmented data, let's call, let's call no, and also call the yes. I'm going to copy this out, and this is my folder number two. And let's call the no to yes. That's fine. Now what I can do is simply going to load all the images from my augmented data directory and try to apply this crop brain tumor functions and try to save it inside the same directory. Let's call the argumented data. 
so for that i'm going to using here for let's call file name uh, in os dot list d okay and i'm going to pass in here my folder number one okay and also the folder number two let's call folder number one then i'm going to read it let's call cb2 dot i am read and after that i'm going to using here the folder one plus the file name file name see this load data is nothing but for the loading the data is nothing but for the loading the data and try to uh, convert them into dependent and the independent features okay dependent and the independent feature x and the y x and the y this is nothing but for uh, the teaching purposes i am just going to creating it here this load data functions so that you can checking the how many images is going to go inside your x data and how many uh, images is going to inside your y1 okay so that's why I'm actually using this one. So now what I can do, I am simply going to uh, crop using this crop brain tumor functions. So crop brain tumor and I'm trying to using here my image and make it false. Okay. Now let's assign it to the same variable called the image. I am G. Then I'm going to using here the CB2 dot I am read CB2 dot I am write not read. And inside that I'm going to be passing here my folder one and plus file name file name okay and also the images okay image drive it's nothing but my folder inside this folder directory it will creating here another file name and passing here the images so simply i'm going to copy this one and i'm going to pasting it here and make it folder 2 and also make it folder 2 and folder 2 okay that's it now what i need to do i have to go inside this folder and try to uh, delete all of the things here <laughs> and to delete all of the things Okay, here is it augmented data and tumors and non tumors. I think I need to delete it out. Okay, I just need to delete it out. Okay, uh, I can delete it from here, just delete it. Okay, delete whole okay. So if I go in here again and try to run this one, okay, folder one is not defined. Okay, folder, okay, folder, fold, folder, okay, folder, okay, folder, D folder two. Okay, again, folder one is in different FOLDR folder one. Double ho chuka hai. Okay, now it's try to rewrite the all images and try to apply in this uh, crop brain tumor function and it will store it and try to replace this one inside this augmented data folder. Okay, so to take time and after that, what I can do, we simply going to apply here this one uh, that we do earlier. Okay, so let's it is take time. Yep, it's it's loaded. So if I go inside this folder, it's called the augmented data, and inside this yes, now you can see here all the images right here in the crop functions, and we're having the same number of size. Okay, now what I can do is simply go inside this uh, code and try to run all, all of them. So go on here and run all of them. Okay, run all of them. That's it. Okay, so now you can see here it is running. And it will also taking time because it will taking all of the images from that and it will copy all the images inside this uh, train test and the validations and also it will try to creating here the model that's for the bz 19 models okay okay thoda time lega yaha par okay ho gaya ho gaya bas ho gaya no then no then no if i go inside this directory and try to check this out uh, the tumorous and the non-tumorous now you can see here training and the tumor is created and all the images now you can see here it is applying the crop brain tumor images thoda mistake ho jata hai yaha par okay aapko bhi hoga yaha par isliye maine isko dekha na true cell rakh diya yaha par upar mein because it's happening it's happening it's happening kyunki human hai na okay now if you, you can see uh, it's our model and this is our compile model so now what I, what i can do is simply going to uh, train our model we simply going to train our model so for that what i can do we can simply go into using this model one uh, let's say model one dot uh, model underscore one dot fit and i'm going to passing here my train uh, generator so train generator generator and i'm going to passing here my step par epochs so a step par epochs so you can also be using here the length of the tree or train generator or the train of the images. I'm going to give you the 10. Okay. And let's start using here the epochs. Epochs, I'm going to be making here 20. And after that, I'm using here the callbacks. 
and inside these callbacks, I'm using here the, all of the callbacks that I actually define here. Yes, CP, and also the LRR. Okay, I have to use here the comma. Okay, and for the validation generator, for the validation data, I'm going to pass in here my validation data. So validation data is nothing but validation generator. So validation generator, or you can say build data gen or generator, build generator. This one. Okay. So this one gives me some values. So let's assign into the one variable called the history. History. Let's call history zero one. Okay, history underscore zero one. That's it. So I'm not going to train it out because it's take really much more amount of time. Bahot time lega hapar. So isko epoch one cut the isko and shift enter and try to check this if it is really working or not. Okay. So augmented receive and layer called dropout zero. Type dropout. Input shape. Uh, int object is not callable. Okay. Let's check this out. The dropout one in our data. Well, it's giving the error because it's zero comma two. It's zero point two. What a mistake! Oh, it's it's not mistake. Why? Okay. Now you can see here it will also loading this one. Bahar bahut shor ho raha hai yahan par. Isliye shayad thoda mistake ho raha hai yahan par. Okay. Now you can see epoch is right now one. It started the epoch. Bye. Bahut time lega. Mat chala na twenty epochs pe. Better you can using here the Google Colab. So it will take two minutes for training this one. So I'll back after this one epoch, and I have the I already trained this out. I have the model uh, using the twenty epoch. So well, so after the two epoch, I just increase the size of the epoch. I got here fifty percent accuracy uh, because of uh, I need to show also the performance of my model so that I can plot the training accuracy and also the training loss. So this is the code for that. How can you plot in your training accuracy and also training loss? But my recommendation is don't try to using your own PC. It's better you can use here the Google Colab. Don't worry. I will actually go to the last of the video. We will try to also show that how can you actually using the Google Colab in order to training your uh, model file. Now what I'm gonna do? I'm simply going to save it out. I take three shell. So let's say I'm going to using here model uh, model underscore zero one dot save. So it's better when you're trying to actually creating here uh, this kind of thing like this is ninety and try to unfreeze or fine tuning it. It's better you can actually using here the weight of that. Okay, weight, GSTS weights. It's better you can actually save the weights. Now inside that, you need to give here the file path. So file path is nothing but uh, higher. It's saving. Okay, so I'm going to give in here a file path. Let's call model uh, width. Okay, I just creating here one single uh, folder that's called the model width, and inside this model width, I have all of the models. So I'm going to give in here. Let's say this is the nineteen. Uh, underscore model underscore zero one dot s five like this one. Now I can also give in here the override. Okay, override equal to true so that if there any file is already available, it will try to override this one. Otherwise, you can also creating here another thing for checking the ensure that if the model weight file is really available. Otherwise, you need to do it manually. Otherwise, you can also do it using the coding part. If it is not available, if not, if os dot path dot is the then simply going to pass it here the model width. So let's say model underscore weight, okay, and backslash n. Now you can you can using this one and try to creating here one directory, mkd, and going to passing here the same thing. Let's call model weight, okay, like this way. So shift enter, it will also creating here the directory if it is not available, and after that it will save it uh, the file inside your directory. So if I let if I go inside here, and you can see here this is the file. And you can see here it having the model dot as five file. This is nothing but check for the checkpoint. And you can see here on model weight file is created. And inside that you can see here this is nineteen underscore model zero one dot as five file. So I will train this model using the twenty box. So what I'm gonna do? I'm simply going to paste it here. Okay. And you can see it pasting the file. Well, it's fine. So now what I'm gonna do? I'm simply going to checking the performance of my model. So in order to loading the model from your directory. So what I'm gonna do? I'm simply going to using here. Uh, model zero one, so model underscore zero one dot load weight, okay, weight, okay. I need to giving here the path of my model. So this is my path of my model. So I'm going to copy this out, copy this out. So what I can do, you can simply uh, train it this out in your Google Colab, and after that you can actually taking this model and try to load it using this model zero one dot save weight. And now I'm simply going to evaluate our model. So for that I'm going to using here the model. Zero one underscore underscore zero one dot uh, evaluate okay evaluate you have to evaluate the model 
so now inside that i'm going to pass in here my ballot generator so ballot generator okay because using the ballot generator or ballot data i can actually do the evolution of my data set so now let's try to also do the testing also i mean testing data also you can also using test data you can also evaluate your model so let's try to giving here evaluate and let's pass in here the task generator that's it now let's assign it to two variable let's call the bgg value means validations evaluate let's get zero one simple okay so let's it's better you can give here the convenient times of uh, variable name so that you can understand it easily so it should be the test so test like this one. now from that you can actually checking for your uh, model loss and the model accuracy and also the testing loss and the testing accuracy so shift enter it will try to evaluate your model and now what i can do i am simply going to printing here the validation loss and also the also the validation accuracy the task loss and also the task accuracy now you can see here uh, for the one times it will try to evaluate our model and try to checking the accuracy because it will also testing all of the files uh, which one is coming inside from the ballet generator so now what i'm going to do i'm simply going to uh, type here some code for actually validation loss let's call validation loss uh, so validation loss is nothing but available inside your uh, fast index the fast index one so that's why i'm going to be using here so let's call bzz uh, bzz okay underscore bell underscore ebell okay zero one okay I, it's better i can pause the video i think it's having some problem uh, on my recording style so well and you can see here uh, it is loaded and it got here 49 percent accuracy on the testing data and for the validation data we got here 69 percent accuracy quite good so and it also add here one f string here and I'm also using here the zero to one. So zero to one is nothing but give me the uh, validation accuracy. Okay, I mean sorry, validation loss. And index number one actually giving here the validations accuracy. Okay, so I'm going to pass in here the four times. So this is for the testing. So let's make it testing. And also I'm going to copy this out and make it testing. Okay, so this is for the validations evaluations, and I'm going to make it one. And also this is for the testing. So let's call make it test. And also try to make it test. Okay, test. That's it. So I need to also make convert them into the one so that I can get here the this is the accuracy. Let's make it add double C and this one is add double C. Cool. So shift enter. Now you can see here we have in the validation loss. It's better. We can give in here some colon so that it looks better. Okay. This one and also this one. Okay. And you can see here for the testing loss is nothing but 72%. And also the training accuracy, testing accuracy is nothing but 49%. Quite good, quite good. You can also uh, do the predictions on your data set that um, you can get some file names from your data set and try to do the predictions, right? So what I can do, let's try to also do this out. Let's call file name equal to, we can get some file name from our train generator because in the train generator, it have all the files same, just like the start. So let's say file name. So file name. So you have the file name. So now let's taking some samples. So let's say number of sample, sample. And what I can do, it can checking uh, the file names so let's go file names okay file names so now after that what you can do you can actually getting here one prediction so let's say model underscore zero one dot predict and inside that i'm going to pass in here my task generator so test underscore generator and i'm going to give in here my steps is nothing but number of sample okay and inside this verbose i'm simply going to using here one okay so to give me the predictions zero one so let's say bzz uh, prediction predictions underscore zero one that's fine now what i can do we can simply checking this level so let's say bgg for that i'm going to be using here the arg max for getting the maximum value now i'm going to pass in here my bgg predictions zero one and let's try to giving here axis is nothing but one okay so let's assign into the variable let's call y pet you can also like like that y predictions so shift enter. So now we just try to taking some random files from your data set and try to fit in here, uh, try to predict it using this train generator and try to give here one output. Okay. So now what I can do, uh, we can simply uh, go into uh, use here the classification report, you know, to get in the classifications. Okay. So I am simply going to uh, actually <laughs> make it a stop because it's really take time because it will try to classify them the whole of the images 
so 310 images it will take in this one and try to draw the predictions so i don't think that i don't need to do it out so i just simply going to click here to interrupt the kernel okay so because it's really take time 43 minutes because recording is also happening so that's why it give me this kind of time so i don't have any much more amount of time to, you know to do this thing here again and again okay that's it okay you can also do it manually and try to do the uh, classification report but how you go to the google collab then i am simply going to test it out right so using that you can also be printing here your classification report and also your accuracy curve okay but i don't think that it's necessary right now okay but when you go to the uh, google collab file then i am simply going to pass here the code and also uh I will also make you understand the what actually happening inside this code. Okay, but it's better we can focusing on the model one right now. Now we we are going to go inside my unfreezing and also the fine tuning because this is the most <laughs> awaiting part. Okay, so let's say the first second part is called the incremental. Okay, incremental unfreezing. Okay, unfreezing. Okay, it's called unfreezing and freezing and fine tuning okay so this is the most most useful one it's called the incremental the unfreezing and the fine tuning because after 20 box i think so i just got here uh, the 49 percent accuracy you can see here 49 percent accuracy and 69 percent accuracy in my same model in my same 20 box model i got here 69 percent accuracy on the validation data set on the validation data set that's mean our model is not actually give me the correct result our model is not giving me the correct result. So what I can do is simply going to using this unfreezing and the fine tuning in order to increase the accuracy. So for that, what I can do is simply going to using here same things. That's a base model, and base model is nothing but our BZ19. And inside that, I'm going to giving here include top equal to false. And after that, I'm going to giving here my input shape. So input shape. So input shape is nothing but 240 or 240. Uh, cross three that's it then i'm going to also giving here the layer name so that we can uh we can also do some changing in our data i mean in, in our in our in our weight file okay so for that what i can do we simply go into uh taking all of the layers from our uh, base model so that you can see the layers name and after that we can actually uh cut some of the layers in our data in our model let's say if i go in here uh, inside that let's say we having the uh, block 5 3 combi, combi 3 block and block 5 combi 4 block so what I can do is simply going to cut the sound so for that we need to also extract in the all of the convolution layer and we can do the fine tuning we can do the fine tuning that's mean we simply going to cut some of the neurons because if there are so many neurons okay we can simply going to cut one of them or cut one the convolution block okay this is called the unfreezing or also called the fine tuning so what I can do is to also checking this base model layer. So for that, I'm going to be creating here one variable that's called the base model layers name. Okay. So it will give me all of the layers name uh, for my PC19. So let's say layers. Okay. Layer dot name. Okay. Layer dot name. Okay. It's coming from for layer in base model dot layer. Okay. Base underscore model dot layers simple well fine just simple simple one leaks comprehensions in order to getting all of the layers now we can also print it out let's say try to print a base model uh, layer names we can actually print it out you can see here uh, it, it having so uh, more, so many layers you can see a block one the con one block block one com two block there are so many actually layer are available so what i can do is simply going to remove this two line i mean remove the two block and after that we try to train it again after that we're going to train it again because there are so many blockers available okay if your model size is increases maybe there should be the problem of the wall fitting so that's why even using this unfreezing technique okay now what i can do is simply going to take it inside my axe that's called a base model okay base model dot output okay base model dot output this is my nothing but my output so this output is coming from where the output is coming from the model number zero one now insert this model number zero one i have the save weight i have the save weight so now what i can do let's better it's better you can go on here and try to uh, clear the output okay now inside this base model i'm trying to pass it inside my flatten layer so let's say flatten okay and inside this flatten 
uh, because this is one functional API. So I'm going to pass it like this way, X. Okay. So let's try to make it as a variable. Let's call the flat. Now inside this flat, I'm going to adding here another dense layer because I need to also add here one uh, classifier layer, just like actually just actually do it before in our in our in our these cases in our these cases. So what I can do? We simply going to copy this out. The same thing. I'm going to copy this out. Same thing. Okay. Same thing. I'm going to copy this out here, and I'm going to pass it here. Now inside that, I have to do some changes. So this is my output, the sort max, the class number two, and also dropout zero point two. Now I need to also create here one model two file. I need to also creating here one model two. So this should be the model number two, model equal to base model, just input. Okay, this should be inputs. Okay, inputs, and this is the output, right? So now what I can do, we can simply uh, going to uh, load our weight. Okay, load our weight using this model two. Because I'm going to passing this model when width, weight, not width, weight into the model number two. So let's say try to pass it here. So let's say model two dot loot weight. Okay. Samajaya, Samajaya. See, we actually train the model number one before. Now what I can do is simply going to combine this model number one and model number two so that we can train it again and try to remove some remove some convolution block from our base model okay so now i'm going to using here model weight weights and i here i'm going to giving here bcc 19 and underscore model underscore 01 dot a spy okay this is my model file now i'm going to load it using this model too now what i can do from the full convolution block from the base model layer so let's try to copy this out and try to add here another shell and pass it. Now you can see from the base model, what I'm gonna do, I am simply going to remove this two block, block number five, convolution three, and block number five, convolution B4. Okay, so what I can do, I am simply going to first set my training, okay, set my trainable equal to false. In the first time, in the first time, by default, I'm trying to making this set trainable in the false mode. Then I'm gonna taking all the layers, Okay, layer from the base model. Okay, in base model dot layers. Okay, from the layers, what are you gonna do? If the layers name, if the layer dot name, okay, dot name in. Okay, which which block? Which one block? Which block? Which block? Which block? This block number, uh, block number five, country and block number uh, four. This one. So what are you gonna do? I'm simply going to pass it here this block number three let's make it four and let's try to make it three so that it's actually follow the increment and decrement one okay so i'm going to making this set trainable equal to true i'm trying to make it this set trainable equal to true by default it flaws but when it coming to the block number five con convolution layer of the four and block layer five and convolution of the three i am trying to make this set trainable equal to true if the set trainable equal to true, now what I can do? If the set trainable, trainable equal to true, equal to true, then I am going to making this layer, the full layer. Okay, the full layer trainable. Okay, trainable equal to true. Simple. How it is coming from here? I am just going to using this last block and try to train it out. I am trying to train it out the last block, the last block. That's mean the last block of the convolution layer and this one and this one. It will try to train it. It will try to train it. Otherwise, I am simply going to making these layers. All of the layers should be the false. So train uh, train able equal to false. Okay, that's mean I am trying to train it using this last two block. Using this last two block. This is called the unfreezing. Okay, and also call the fine tuning. Unfreezing and the fine tuning is nothing in the two part. Okay, I'm simply going to print it out. Let's say I do model and underscore zero two dot summary. Okay. Now you can got the summary of your base model. Okay, set trainable is not defined. Okay, set trainable. Okay, set trainable. Shayat yaha par tab press ho gaya tha isliye. Okay, shift enter. Now let's wait for few seconds. You can also do this one. 
okay this is nothing but for predictions i don't think that is necessary it will really take time even though uh it's take more amount of time here so you can see here this is nothing but my uh input eight my input layer and you can see all the block and after that i'm simply going to cut it out you can see the block number five column three and block number five three okay so if i go up here again model zero two okay this is my model zero two and this is also loaded from my directory okay that's it how can I actually do the unfreezing in your model file okay now let's try to using here the same technique uh same technique what i can do you can simply go into copy this one uh you can uh use here the early stopping it's necessary i don't think it's necessary i simply going to copy this out okay the sgd okay sgd and also i need to giving here the model number two model number two and i need to also using here uh where is it the base model Okay, base model is two times okay base model is two times so that's why also me problem so what i can do is simply going to uh, copy this one also where is it this one okay this is the history number two history number two and this one and i have to making this one uh, model number two and this is the history number two okay so i'm simply going to run it out better it can run this one also okay and it printing the summary and it will also the gradient descent okay now you can see here it also printing the uh, all of the neurons and this is the model compile and our model compilation is done so i actually press this one history zero two it will start the epoch size okay that's better we can actually start in this out uh, okay let's better start this out that is there any error or not now you can see here epoch is started so i'll get back after the two epochs and uh, and also try to painting here the graph for the performance so well so all model training is completed so now what i can do for plotting the performance so i'm simply going to copy the code from here uh here is it i'm simply going to copy this one Control a and Control c and i'm simply going to pass it here okay now to printing the accuracy metrics so i'm going to make it to be history two copy this out pass it here and you have probably passed kind of like past hoja okay shift enter now you can see here this is for the training accuracy and also the training loss and after that you can see here accuracy also increases for 64 percent and this is the 70 percent uh, for my entry and just for the two epochs so i also train it out using the uh, 20 epochs for the this unfreezing and the fine tuning so i'm simply going to again pass here the model file inside my working directory but before that i need to also save it out uh, that how can you actually save the model so let's try to pass it here first to pass it here uh, that uh, they get our model so in order to saving this one what i can do the simply the same thing that you do earlier uh, simply going to copy this one uh, copy this in model weight uh, this one uh, and i am simply going to pass it here okay just pass it here and take some shell okay so this model 2 dot save and just giving here model 2 so i'm not going to save it because otherwise it will try to lower it this one okay so i am simply going to comment this line okay and simply going to run it out okay that's fine now and now i can actually uncomment this one so that it show like that it's running this shell okay fine so you can also do the evaluation of your matrix i mean evaluate evaluate your uh, model using this one i'm simply going to copy this one the same thing and after that, I'm simply going to paste it here and try to using here model zero two. Okay. So let's try to also using it model two and try to shift enter and we'll try to evaluating with the model with the tan epox. Okay. So now after that, what I can do is simply going to do the final one. That's called the uh, unfreezing and the fine tuning. And in this case, we just actually incrementing this fine tuning part. Now in this part, what I can do is simply going to uh, using here the unfreezing and the fine tuning the entire network so this is the last step and using this step you can get here some more amount of accuracy just like 80 or 90 percent accuracy when i should training this model out so let's wait for a few minutes because it also evaluating our model so well it's ready right now and it's also evaluate that and it got here 54 percent accuracy and the 70 percent accuracy uh for the 20 epochs that you do earlier in my own pc 
I mean Google Colab actually. So now what I'm gonna do is simply going to unfreeze the whole network, the entire network. Okay, unfreeze. Okay, freezing uh, the entire network, entire network. Okay. So what I can do, we can simply go into using this one. The same thing. That's mean it's actually trying to training this model and again and again. That's it. Okay. So you can simply go into copy this order. And I'm going to pass it here. And this is the model number three, right? So this one and this base model, all the things are same. Just I need to add here the same thing here. Just going to convert this to model number three. And also model three dot load weight like this way. And also I need to give here my uh, uh my optimizers and also my compile okay so i am simply going to compile it i'm going to copy this one and i'm going to pass it here okay model two that's it about that model number three okay so it's better first we can copy this out and i'm going to uh, make this should be the model number two okay model number two this one okay fine so now if I try to use the shift enter and this our model and our model is try to compile them and now I need to also make it common model number three okay because this is the model number three and this is the last model okay let's try to do the summary of the model number three so model 03 dot summary okay and this is summary of my model and this is the model number uh, three and you can see here the same model so now using this model, I'm going to simply going to train it out. This one. So this one really take time uh, you know, to train the model. It's maybe take, uh, in the Google Colab, it just take me uh, 60 to 80 minutes. But in here, it will take maybe three to four hours in my PC. So it's better, I can just stop this one. Okay, you just make it this one, model number three. So what I'm gonna do, I'm simply going to pasting here the model file uh, in my directory, working directory. Well, so I make this one busy the unfrozen uh, because this is the last one done freezing the model. This is the final one after three epochs. So what I can do, I simply go inside my code and after that I need to also evaluate our model. So in order to checking the performance of my model. So what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to using here this one. Let's call BGG unfrozen. Unfrozen, unfrozen, like this one. Okay. Okay. You can also check this out from here. So just go on here, uh, bzz unfrozen dot as5. Okay, this one. Just go here again and try to paste it here. Okay. So if I using the shift enter and it will evaluating the model file. Okay. In your data set. So now using this model file, what I can do is simply going to um, creating here one flux web application in order to testing this out. That is really working here fine or not. Uh, and it is try to um, detect. I mean the classify the images of the brain tumor. So well, and you can see here our evolution is done. And after that, I got here 81% accuracy. And also I do here one mistake. I just keep here the model number two, model number one in the same times. So that's why I just keep here. I got here the 54% accuracy like that for the model number two. If I see this on and I change this out, the model number two, and you can see I got here 57% accuracy and the 69% accuracy on the uh, validation data. I just train it out using the 30 epochs. Okay, third 30 epochs uh, and I got here 81% accuracy. If you try to increase it uh, like 50 epochs, you can actually get here maybe 90 to 95 accuracy, okay? Okay, so you can also using here the Google Colab, okay, Google Colab in order to training this one, that how can actually using this one. But don't worry, if you have uh, do much more amount of time, you can also using here the model file, that's bzz underscore unfrozen, I actually give it out inside my Google Drive so you, that you can actually, uh, copy this out I mean download this out and try to building the flux applications okay so now let's go on here and try to creating here the flux applications two years ago I create here a playlist called deep learning for healthcare in this playlist I actually discussing about the brain tumor image classification projects using CNN this is the same project right now I am discussing but in different way in this project we simply going to creating here one CNN model and try to classify the brain tumor now the same code, the same web application code, I am trying to using it here. I mean, for creating the Flux application right now. If you are a beginner, just want to try to building the CNN model from the scratch, you can using this one. I just giving you the reference for that because this is the most top 10 uh, project in my playlist. The first one, the first project, because a student actually and also the people give me so much messages on Instagram, even the Facebook or via mail. 
and I'm trying to helping them out and they're actually really using this project at their final years and they got so much um, best results okay so now what I'm gonna do I'm simply going to creating here one web application this same code the same code I'm going to using it here and try to modify it so well I am simply going to pass in here the all of the template file I mean the the UI file for the HTML CSS and also the Python file and also I'm going to pass in here this business unfrozen dot as5 file inside this brain tumor classification DL and you can see here it having a folder that's I mean in it having a file that's called the app.py so I'm simply going to open it let's say open with code okay and this is the our nothing but call the PS code so now let's understand what actually happening inside this code see we have one folder is called aesthetic and another folder is called the template and inside this static folder it having the CSS and the JavaScript this is nothing but for the front end and also having an folder that's called the template this is nothing but containing all of the template in a HTML files it having import.html and also index.html okay this is nothing but for the uh, creating the front end okay now what actually happening here inside this app.py see we actually import here the OS then we import here the numpy and also the images and also cb2 because cb2 is needed you know to load in the images from our directory then we actually import here the render template in order to render in the template from our templates folder then we have the secret file name and having the model and the flat end the dance dropper and also the bz19 so why bz19 because we actually using here the bz19 in order to training our entire network so then what we can do we can simply using his base model that we do earlier in our also the jupyter notebook and also using here the flat and the same thing the same theme we are going to using it here uh, in order to in order to loading our model now this is nothing but one weight file this is not a load model so you can using here the load model here you are to using here this model 03.weight like this way like this way you know to using this one now what i can do i simply going to printing it here this model is loaded check this one so if i go up it's nothing but on restful api flux is nothing but on framework and using this one you can actually creating the restful api so this is the home index number html in index.html this is nothing but my uh, initial one this is not my initial one so how you try to click the predict button when actually calling i mean click the predict button it will giving here two methods it's called the get method and the post method when you select one images and when you click in this predict button it will try to predict it okay if your method is post that means you need to upload here one file you need to upload here and file and from the file name it will try to store it inside your upload folder inside your upload folders now inside this upload folder it will try to pass this inside the get results inside this get result so what are the get results the get result is nothing but one function which will help you in order to in order to give you the results so you can see here cb dot i am read and try to re read it from a pillow and try to read it in the form of rgb and try to resize it because you already resize our images uh, using 240 cross 240 and we also give here the rgb so we don't need to actually giving here the number of channels then we're going to convert them into the numpy dot array and after that we will be using here the expand dimension in order to getting the result and try to pass it inside my predict function expert dimension actually giving here the reshape of your data because how you're trying to uh, try to put the data inside one CNN model or a transfer learning model will to reshape our data so for that we're simply going to using here the expand dimensions then we're simply going to using here model 03 i mean this model 03 dot predict dot predict since the two years ago actually creating the same products but many of them actually get here some error that sequential object has no attribute called predict classes why this error why this error called sequential object has no attribute called uh, predict why this error because i this time i am actually using here tensorflow 2.2.1 that's the main reason predict classes is working in my cases it's not working in your cases the people who are actually gave me the uh, comment on the youtube comment box otherwise in instagram or the messengers uh, why this error because they actually using here the latest version of the tensorflow so in the latest version of the tensorflow they actually removing this predict classes the predict classes now how can actually resolve this problem how can you resolve this problem you need to using here the predict and after that you need to using here the uh, rg max i also do the comment on the youtube comment box and also pin it out but i don't know why many of them actually uh, give me the masses at the instagram and also the messenger i don't know why okay and after you actually give me the results now from the result i need to also check this out which one is a brain tumor and which one is not a brain tumor then i'm simply going to creating here one function that's called the get class name 
and from the get class name i can get here no brain tumor and also yes brain tumor then to return the e result otherwise it will give me the none i mean is there any error or not okay so this is how the code is working simple you can get this code in the video description of the github link it's totally free right now you don't have any uh, password because uh, actually so many of them actually using this project for the final year so i think that jo hoga suspend ho jayega okay so let's copy this out no copy not save this out and i'm trying to run this out let's go on here and try to run this out and run in this applications well so it's running up and down so let's go on here and follow the link now it's open it's called the brain tumor classifications using deep learning let's go on here and choose file on brain tumor data set let's choose any one of them this is the yes let's click on predict and uh, let's wait for a few seconds is there any error let's check this out inside my terminal okay it's loaded i think it gave me the results just to wait just to wait the first time it will give me the it's really take time okay let's go on here again and try to check this out it is restarting, restarting these applications okay thoda thoda time laga yahan par okay let's select this one again i think it is starting the kernel and try to open it and try to click on predict yeah right now you can see yes brain tumor it's really working fine uh let's try to select some photo from no let's select from here and try to predict and you can see no brain tumor how fast it will working okay in the first one that actually creating here the two years ago in some cases it will give me some wrong results but in this case you can see how quick and how fast it is give me the results that's why this is quite different from the two years ago i created because tab to bachcha tha na maine i mean no tha <laughs> okay let's try to select this one and let's select try to check this one yes brain tumor so that's it for today now hope you enjoy the tutorial and make sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon bahut bahut mehnat hua hai is tutorial ko banane ke liye shayad electricity chala jata hai nahi to mom iska bad grandma hai kya bolu bahut kuch ho jata hai yahan par it's not so easy to be a youtuber <laughs> okay okay so that's it for today now again 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 so pray karna subscribe karna share karna boyfriend girlfriend jo hai sab kuch sab log ko share kar dena and tata and bye bye if you are new to my youtube channel so please do subscribe and hit the bell icon and this is our multiverse of 100 plus data science project series playlist and i already covered here the 14 videos so you are having 1 2 3 4 four advanced types of machine learning projects so please check those out right